<laughs> I'm here with Suzanne Beal, um, and uh, she is the writer of I Am Not My Mother. So, um, can you tell us what inspired you to write the piece? What was real interesting, actually, Janae and I had had a conversation about doing something that would uh, bring in some new people into the theater that would focus on women. This was a very casual conversation, and anyway, to make a long story short, um, I had said that I I really love to do something that involved mothers and daughters because I had done my PhD dissertation in, in that area in, in theater and um, and Janae had said well the Met had always been interested in doing a piece that dealt, had um, used story circles as source material so I said well let's try to do that and then I I said well how about because you guys are always so busy how about if I uh, do a couple of story circles and see what happens. So how did you go about finding women to contribute to stories and join in these circles? Well, it was very interesting. The first thing I did, of course, was call on my friends and <laughs> colleagues, and I did three story circles with women from Frederick Community College, where I work. But I also am involved with the Women's Giving Circle, and I had thought that it would be a wonderful collaboration with the Met if we could support the good work of the Women's Giving Circle, because um, the circle supports causes that um, support women and children in the community. And so I approached Carlos Klein and said, what if we form a kind of collaboration with the Women's Giving Circle and any profit, you know, beyond the cost of the production, would go to the Women's Giving Circle and in turn, uh, some of those women then might be willing or eager, actually, to participate in, in uh, story circles. And so I did three circles with women from the Women's Giving Circle. And then my book club and, you know, on and on and on. I did one because of a friend of mine who is on the board of the Record Street Home with the women of the Record Street Home, one of whom uh, was 100 years old. All of these women were in their late 80s and 90s. And then I also did one with six great girls, which was really just <laughs> wonderful fun. Um, I did one with um, African-American women who grew up in, in Frederick um, and, uh, and a, a couple of other book clubs and on and on and on. Over about 90 women participated. How did you go about narrowing, narrowing down like what stories, you, what material you were going to use from all those circles? You know, that was, I, I don't want to say it was arbitrary, but there was something sort of inspiring instinctual about it. It wasn't mm -hmm. something that I did in a really logical, linear way. Uh, we had transcribed all of these, um, all of the material. I'd recorded everything, and they were all transcribed. And I, I um, took the transcriptions, and the, the stories that sort of leapt out, that had a sort of drama to them, mm -hmm. or a poignancy, or I'm that sure were you funny. Had recurring themes absolutely. to come up. Absolutely. And, and so I lifted them that way, and then I organized it around theme. Mm -hmm. And the piece in the form it's in now is organized thematically. There are 11 scenes, all that sort of focus around a different idea or issue, mm -hmm. if you will. What were the main challenges you faced putting the piece together, do you think? Um, the main challenge for me was to do justice and honor to the women who mm -hmm. participated. And when you think about all the stories that I heard, and every single circle was very moving and funny, and mm -hmm. uh, and so I wanted to make sure the piece captured that 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 sense of those circles. Uh, so that was really the biggest challenge. That and the fact that I had what ten hours of material mm -hmm. in in putting that into a theater piece of about an hour. Um, so what do you hope the audiences um, will take? away from them for, with this piece? Uh, first of all, I hope they're going to be entertained. Mm -hmm. I want people to have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, for the women who see the piece, I would like every woman who sees this piece to see some little bit of themselves in there. Maybe a, just a line, maybe a story will resonate, maybe a piece of a song, so that it's recognizable. You know, one of the things I've often said is that, you know, there, there is a wealth of material about mothers, and, and even mothers and daughters, but more often than not, the material is at the extremes, either dealing with the, what I call the angel mom or the hallmark mom, or the monster mom, the horrible mom. 
and most of us had quite ordinary mothers, um, and and yet our relationship, which is such a central relationship for all women, um, is it it's very complicated. And um, I'm hoping that everybody who walks away from it kind of appreciates that.